Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Lucas Dentist here, and today I'm going to talk about two of the most popular integration tools that we use with Go High Level. I'm talking about Zapier and Make. You're probably familiar with Zapier already because it has been on the market for a while, but Make is not necessarily new. Make used to be called Integromat, and now they have gone through this rebranding process, and now everyone calls them Make. And both of these tools are excellent, and if you needed to integrate two different systems, you were either looking at a franking style of a solution or a very costly API project that you probably will have to pay someone hundreds of dollars per hour to have them working on it for you. But thanks to both of these tools, that's no longer the case. And I'm going to talk about both of these tools here in this video. I'm going to show how you can integrate them with Go High Level. And then at the end, you can make the decision which one you rather purchase. So let's jump into this content. Let's go. I have opened right here one of the make accounts I manage for a client and you can see right on the dashboard the usage of this account right here I can see how many operations I have per month how many unused operations I have 6767 out of 10,000 so this is how much is left on my account at the moment and I can also see here at the bottom my active scenarios each scenario is each flow each automation that you would like to implement in operations are what's happening inside of the scenarios so you could have one scenario with multiple operations and to not only stay like in theory let's show how you can create scenarios but before let me show two examples of scenarios that i have in this account this is a client that he has a shopify store so we have created an integration between shopify and go high level and this one right here called abandoned checkout recovery that what this does is whenever someone abandons a cart on shopify we then add a tag to this content this flow right here shows that it's watch abandoned checkouts is search for the contacts you can see right here search for the contacts and then update a contact and we can see right inside of this flow inside of this scenario however you want to call it we have a tag cart recovery and we also have another flow that adds a tag sales recovered if one of those contacts that have the tag abandoned checkout abandoned cart in this case if they make a purchase while they are in this automation we then switch the tags and add the sales recovered tag this is a new client that we're trying to help them get more sales on their Shopify store. So we have implemented this not too long ago. Hopefully, we will have enough information to show them as a report later saying, oh, this is how many sales you were able to recover using this automation. So that's something that you could do with your clients as well. So let's show now how you can integrate high level creating an example scenario here. So I create, I clicked on create a new scenario. In here, I'm going to initiate our automation, our flow. And what I want you to think here is that whenever you're trying to automate something, you need to think of where this information is coming from. If you're trying to integrate something that comes from outside of Go High Level to inside of Go High Level, you need to find this application on the first step. So I'm going to just give an example. Like let's say every time someone fills out an Elementor form, we want to create a contact on Go High Level. I'm not going to do the whole thing here. I have another video where I show other integrations, but at least here you get the reference. You get the uh, at least the concept of how this works. So whenever someone fills out a form on Elementor, now we can look for high level on the second step, high level lead connector. And then you can, for example, create a contact, right? And then from here, you are able to get the fields from the form that you add on this first step. You need to add the web hook. And on Elementor, you have a field specifically for that. I have a place to just put that. And then when you run the form and the automation for the first time, you're going to see that all the form fields have been mapped here. And then you can drag and drop, easily drag and drop to map to each one of this information, right? Because you want to put the first name, where the first name is, last name, where the last name is, email, where the email field is. And then you're able to create a contact from an elementary form submission. So this is how you would do this from outside of Go High Level to High Level. If you want to do the opposite way, what you have to do is instead of choosing the other application here, you would start with High Level and then you do like, for example, watch contact updated. You could do watch incoming data. That's another step that you can do here. Oops, I have to remove this. So always make sure that you add as a first step and then you see different uh, options right here. So you here, whenever a contact has been updated and also whenever entities are created or updated, this is more 
more general so he gets more objects so you can get opportunities you can get contacts you can get whenever someone makes a purchase so there's a lot of things that you can add here so this is pretty much how it works with make let's jump now to zapier so we can see how that works so i have opened here for you one of the zapier accounts i manage and the concept here is pretty much the same of make and with the slight differences for example the usage for the account you will find on the left panel right here where it says included tasks on this plan we have 2000 and 131 of 2000 have been done so far have been performed so far have been activated so far and we can also see our zaps here it shows the recent zaps but on make we have operations and scenarios and you know that a scenario could have multiple operations it's the same here with zapier we have zaps and tasks so you could have one zap which is the same as a scenario which is an automation a flow and you have multiple tasks inside of a zap and it's getting confusing when you say multiple operations inside of a scenario multiple tasks inside of a zap so let's just say flow so a zap or a scenario is a flow and what's happening inside of this flows are let's say actions or operations or tasks in this case here anyway i don't want to go over this it's getting too complicated i'm feeling overwhelmed right now but let me show you examples of zaps that i have right here and this three right here is a good example because they do basically the same all we're doing here is whenever someone progress from one stage of a pipeline to the other we send an offline conversion to google ads so here the pipeline stage you see the sdr pipeline and we have a status here that it represents something portuguese but it's confirmed appointment so whenever someone changes from inside of this pipeline to confirm the appointment we then send an offline conversion to google ads so this is a way that we found here to integrate go high level with google ads in a way that we send conversions to Google Ads. So we can see from our campaigns, we can see how many people from one lead, we can see how many of those leads have signed a contract, have booked an appointment, have received a follow-up. All of this are offline conversions we are sending to Google Ads from this integration. So just like I did on Make that I showed you how to create an integration with Google High Level, let's do it on Zapier now so you see how that looks like. So we're going to click on Create. And here on Zapier, that's one difference. And they were genius with this. They have this AI assistant that will help you design your flows. So I can type in here, when a contact fills out a form on Cognito, I want to create a contact on high level let's see what the co-pilot's gonna say i'm testing this right here with you guys right in front of you and if this doesn't work there's not much i can do oh uh, they were not able to find but anyway you will do it right here you look for cognito cognito forms see the ai is not a, not as good yet but then new entry right so whenever someone fills out a form then you can add this task right here high level actually you're gonna lead, look for lead connector yeah don't look for a high level look for lead connector and then you are able to add update contact and just like you would do on, on make of course you need to set up your account here i have some accounts that i have already set up but you are able to click continue here and you are able to map each field with the information that you get from cognito forms the same way that you would do on make so this is pretty simple and like i said before here we are trying to integrate something from outside of go high level to inside of go high level so if you wanted to do the opposite way all you would have to do is instead of choosing the other application on the first step you would choose lead connector on the first step instead so now you know that to integrate make or zapier you need to look for lead connector don't look for high level high level we showed up on make but it didn't show up on zapier so keep that in mind when you're creating your integrations so let's compare these tools and i know that for a lot of you what matters is pricing so you're starting with pricing right here you can see how much each plan costs and of course there's a free plan that that brings you 1000 operations per month i use the core plan which i pay per monthly ten dollars and 59 cents but here they said the recommended one the 18 dollars and 82 cents uh, it does make sense if you have like more complex operations but i think most of people that are watching this video they're going to be looking at core or pro unless you're some huge guy that i don't know about you might be looking at enterprise or even teams but at least from for the examples that we have brought up here and for most cases with high level i believe core or pro 
should be more than enough for you. And you see here, it says 10,000 operations. You can see what is included on each plan. And before these 10,000 operations, you can have plans with more than that. And to understand what's an operation, I had to come all the way here because that's something I couldn't understand either. Because like there are some scenarios that have like, I don't know, 15 operations. And I don't understand, I only have like four steps. Why would be 15 operations? But the reason is right here. All of these are considered an operation. Reading data from an app or a webhook, searching for data, creating data, updating data, deleting data, transforming data, aggregating data, iterating a row of data. So all of those are considered operations. You're not charged by each one of those, but you have that as a limit on your account, 10,000 operations per month. So keep that in mind if you are interested on signing Make. And also they have this annually plan that you can pay $9 per month. Of course, you're gonna pay for the whole year, but you get a discount on volume right here. So this is what, what Make can do. And let's take a look now at Zapier so we can compare. I have Zapier open right in front of the screen right here. You see, there's also a free plan. The plans for Zapier, they are more like spread out apart. So they have from zero, they go to $29 and then 73, and then there's 103, and then there's a company plan. That's probably more advanced stuff. Here, we're using the Pro because we need some unlimited premium apps. So that's the only reason why we needed this. We don't need 2,000 tasks, but this is the minimal amount of tasks that they put for us. But as you see, it's way more expensive, $73, as opposed to $10.59 that I do for make. My objective here is not to make you give up on Zapier and start using make. I'm going to leave both links for you to sign up for these tools here in this video, but to show you what you can get with which one of them. So I imagine the most people here, they will be looking at the starter plan, maybe the professional if they're using the unlimited premium apps, but both of these plans probably should uh, should be able to suff, should be able to handle all your needs. And you can also be more flexible on the amount of tasks. But the only problem is that the starter plan only allows you 1500 tasks per month. And looking at, uh, let's, let's open here the account, just so you can see that Zap history, for example. So by looking at all these executions, you see that most of this are considered one task. These ones are two tasks because it does connect with multiple applications. It has the first step and then it does two things on two different other applications. In this case, Active Campaign and Dynamic CRM 365. But other than that, if you have simple integrations, it's going to be considered one, two, three tasks. And then based on how many times you expect that to run daily, you can make the math to see if that will be a good plan for you. But anyway, I hope you guys like this content. Like I've said before, I'm going to leave both links for you to sign up, either Make or Zapier in the description of this video. And I'll also leave a pinned comment in this video with the links as well. So hopefully this content was helpful for you. And if you did, please like this video. Or if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe to this channel. See you on the next one.